structure. So this is the second, this is the answer to, um, who did this one? I can't remember who's. So this is another one of those structures, as I mentioned, we're going to talk about three different frameworks. This is framework number two. So this says for people desperately looking for accommodations who have, or for travelers, for, um, for salespeople or conference travelers who are looking desperately for a room for a night, you know, Airbnb is a um, shared um, mattress place that offers immediate availability at incredibly low price, which unlike hotels, has far greater capacity and a homely feel, right? The big differentiation in Airbnb is that they have a very homely feel. People who go, who've used Airbnb love and tell stories about their experience with the host. And that's what makes a difference. It's very warm, it's very intimate, it's very special versus a hotel. So that's an example of a pitch structure that you can follow, which clearly is going to be less than a minute, right? You, you can nail this in about 40 to 50 seconds. Um, I love, do you know Adio Rossi, who knows him? Yeah. Okay, so this is his. I use this, I always say, so you wanna come up with multiple pitch ideas. One of them is when, when you're at a party and someone goes, so what do you do, Maha? My company okay. is developing to help solve a problem with secret sauce. So you always wanna be ready with, so what do you do? You wanna have that memorized, and this is a great, example of a pitch structure that you can use to answer that question in terms of putting it all together. Um, so this is specifically the, the right structure for what do you do, right? If you can answer these questions, you've got your answer. Uh, Dave McClure, which I'm sure all of you are very familiar with, has a whole, uh, a slightly different model on his flow for the pitch. So he always talks about the elevator ride is all about sparking interest. So the first most important thing you want to do is wake up the investor because they're all asleep. So you want to say something that he goes, oh wait, I got to listen to this one. So what is that line? What is that one sentence that you can say? Uh, the money shot, the demo, which obviously in your one minute pitches you're not going to do, but if you get a longer time frame or you're actually in a VC meeting, you know, he always recommends leading in with a, with a demo. Uh, size matters, so he's very interested in how big is the market that you're going after. I'll disagree with that a little bit. If you look at some of the biggest unicorns that were born, they actually all started with very small, not necessarily thinking big, big markets. I think as long as there's a way for you to take your small idea and small market into a bigger place, that's great. But yes, for him, it's really important that you focus on at least a way to get to a very large market. One of the things I personally learned from my own mistakes is when you go after a small market, you don't get a lot of chances to make mistakes. So for example, uh, my second startup, Job Flash, we went into Vegas. It was, we were gonna use speech recognition, so I've always been at the bleeding edge. So my, I was the first mobile messaging done.com platform on WAP. WAP died, so did we. My second startup, a week later that I started and bootstrapped, was Job Flash. And the idea for Job Flash was very simple. Uh, white collar recruiting was being automated, was creating hundreds of millions of value. Blue collar recruiting was still pen and paper and walking. And that seemed kind of silly. So speech recognition was very new and hot, nuanced, be vocal, we're just coming out with more reliable technologies. So we decided to do a test. We literally, like four of us, just got together and we built ourselves a little platform. So you could call in, say a name of a job, and it worked, and we did some pilots and it actually worked. We did San Ramon Marriott and San Jose Hilton, and. And so we took it to Vegas. And Vegas, as you know, is a very, very small market. Thank God we <coughs> succeeded. But had we failed, had any of our first customers, our first big customer was Venetian, and then we basically nailed every casino in Vegas. They opened using Job Flash. Had we failed, what do you think would have happened to us? We would have died. Because that kind of negative publicity is hard to get over, right? So, so when you pick a smaller market, the stakes get higher. The stress gets higher because you really honestly cannot screw up on any dimension. You cannot screw up from your company culture. You cannot screw up in terms of your product, your support, your deliverable promises. So it, the stakes just get a lot higher when the size of the market is small. And then we exited, so that was fine. Um, revenue, how are you going to make money off of this? 
Yes, it is true, there are a lot of companies that don't make a lot of money and are still doing incredibly well. For example, Etsy is going public without real revenues. Um, for example, Nextdoor just entered the Unicorn Club as of yesterday at a $1.1 billion valuation with zero revenues. So do you have to have revenues right now in terms of you know, timing to revenue? No, you don't. What you need to be able to say is that the value that you're building in your venture is monetizable, right? So that's the line. The value that I'm going to build is, and it's monetizable in this format. So Nextdoor claims they will monetize because all these women that are coming in, men that are getting on the platform, are going to pay for services like plumbers and electricians and landscapers. So you want to always be able to prove monetization. And then, of course, the team.